Hello everyone, this is LaVoy Fincombe, One Cowboy Stand for Freedom. And I promised that I'd make more videos when things progress between me and the federal government, uh, the BLM in particular, and they have. And before I get into the particulars, I want to say a few things. It's kind of easy for people to see what I'm standing against, but maybe not quite so easy to see what I'm standing for. What I'm standing for is I'm standing for freedom. I'm standing for the liberty for the individual American. I want my children to grow up in a free country. We've lost our freedoms. We've lost our Constitution. The federal government is enmeshed and entwined in almost every aspect of our life. You can see that in, in Obamacare and, and thousands of other things. And so when the federal government begins to, to refuse to be confined by the laws of the land, by the supreme law of the land, our constitution. It's up to, to you know, our politicians and the courts to check it, but they haven't. They're actually part of the problem. They've, they've continued to grow the power and drop power into the, a central government. And when a central government begins to, to overreach its bounds, then the states, the individual states, are supposed to stand up and check the federal government. And they haven't. And so what happens when these balances of power, these checks in our government, are no longer working? The last remedy for freedom rests in the individual Americans. The individual American has to stand up for liberty. They need to understand the Constitution. They need to understand what liberty is, what freedom is. And so here we are, we're at that point. We're at the point where the federal government has said to the West that we own and control your land. As I said earlier, the federal government is laying claim to one third of the land mass of the United States. Now I ranch here in Mojave County. Mojave County is about the fourth largest county in the, all of the United States. Millions of acres. I actually have to drive through two different states and around the Grand Canyon to get to our county seat. It's 300 miles from my doorstep to the doorstep of the county buildings in, in, uh, at our county seat in the city of Kingman. Well, this Mojave County is 98% controlled by the BLM. They say we own and control 98% of the land mass of Mojave County. Now, you need to understand, as I've said before, why this is so bad. They consolidate all three branches of power. The BLM, the federal government has said, has exclusive legislative power over these lands. And so a bureaucrat behind the desk will write a statute. And then they enforce it by federal rangers, armed and authorized to use force lethal force if necessary. You get contrary with them, you're hauled into a federal court. Now none of these bureaucrats do we elect here in Mojave County. None of them are accountable to us in Mojave County. They are not subject to the power of recall. This is the definition of tyranny. You say, well, is it really that bad? Well, let me just show you an example. Over here where my daughter goes to school is the town of Fredonia. Fredonia used to be an up-and-coming town. It had a, had a vibrant logging industry. Um, ran two shifts, one shift and swing shift. I worked on, at the sawmill there for a little while. They shipped lumber all over the country. And they also had an oil refinery. That little town had an oil refinery. And then they had a vibrant mining industry, an exploratory industry. Um, well, what has happened? Well, they've clamped down on the lumber industry. It's, and Kaibab Ministry went out of business, folded. Um, there's a little family that has a little uh, lumber operation where they, they, they lumber just a few board, you know, a little bit of um, board feet compared to what Kaibab the industry did. You know, it's just a very, very small operation. So, so that lumber industry is gone. All the people that are employed in those two different shifts in that big company, they're all gone. People came from, from all down from Utah, from Kanab, working in, in that, besides the people in Fredonia. 
well, what happened to the oil refinery? Well, EPA, you know, shut it down. It's gone. It doesn't exist. Um, and what happened to the mining industry? Well, they shut it down. Ken Salazar, no more, no more, no more mining here on the Arizona Strip. When the last two little mines are played out, it's done. So what's happened? All of our industries left this little town. That leaves the people there. They either have to leave the community to go find work, or they have to try to stay alive some other way. And a lot of times that's by receiving some government welfare, some government subsidies, some help. And what happens to the individual when that happens? You know, when a man's out there busting his butt on a drill rig or, or out in the, the timber logging and, and working hard every day, sweat of his brow, you know, bringing home the, the bacon to his family, and, or he's out there in the mine or working his ranch, that builds the individual, builds his character, and he has self-esteem and self-worth, and the community reflects it. And so now the government shuts it down. They say, the federal government says, no, that's ours, that lumber's ours, that mineral's ours, that grazing is ours, it's ours, and we're shutting it down. But here's some, here's some welfare. You can have that. And so in that way, they, they destroy the, the fabric, the, the character of our, our citizens, of our nation. And so it is oppressive. Go down here to our county seat, the city of Kingman. Drive up and down the main streets there. Look at how many stores are boarded up. You tell me the Mojave County is thriving. It is not thriving because the federal government owns, they claim ownership of 98% of Mojave County. We're subjects to the federal government. We have no representation. There's no election to these people that rule over us. So it is wrong. This is, again, the definition of tyranny. Okay, enough with the, the, the preaching uh, again and the, the trying to reteach these same principles that I've, I've tried to teach before. Let's get down to the brass tacks. What's happened? Well, I've acknowledged Mojave County, is Mojave County and state of Arizona, as the rightful owners of this land. Remember, at the point of statehood, these lands are to be disposed of to the states. The federal government says, nope, we're holding on to them. Okay. So here we are. But I, as an individual, can uphold the Constitution. And so I'm acknowledging Kingman, our county seat, Mojave County, as the closest government to we the people. And so I'm going to pay a production tax off my cattle to Mojave County. I will no longer pay my mandatory grazing fees to the BLM. So what happens? Well, let's show you what happens. Here's a certified letter from the BLM. And it's, let me go through it. It's important that I go through it with you. It says, Dear Mr. Franco, as you're aware, the Arizona Strip District Office of the BLM identified 24 head of your cattle with calves on the tuck-up allotment on August 4th. Tuck-up allotment. That's my ranch. Okay. They're calling it allotment. We allot it to you. Okay. On August 7th, we contacted you by phone and requested that you remove these unauthorized livestock within seven days. On August 17th and on August 21st, we counted a total of 38 head of your unauthorized livestock on the allotment. Based on these findings, we have enclosed a trespass notice identifying the laws and regulations which you are, vi are violating. What laws and regulations are those? Well, they're the laws and regulations of the bureaucrats. Did I vote on them? Did we the people here in Mojave County vote on them? No, we did not. People behind the desk wrote these laws and regulations. Okay. If these allegations we have made are correct, you must permanently cease and desist from the violations. Okay. The charges and damages due to the United States are estimated as false. Charges and damages. Now remember, I've showed you that pasture down there, thousands of acres in that pasture. For six years, I've never grazed on that pasture, never grazed it off. This is my first time turning in on that pasture, on that ranch of mine. And they said, oh, you can't have them there. You come in too early. And we said, you can't come in here till October 15th. And so you've come in here too early. And so you're in violation of our regulations. It doesn't matter if the grass is high and that I finally have water there and that for the first time I can graze this off. It doesn't matter. You're in violation of our regulations, of our laws. Okay, so here is a non willful trespass fee of $92 and change and a willful trespass fee of $180 got two fines for 10 days of trespasses, this is just 10 days, 
And we better look at the administrative costs that they leveled against me. An administrative cost of $1,185 and change. Now, that's pretty typical of government, isn't it? And so the total amount that I owe them now for fees and fines for 10 days is $1,458 and change. Okay. Now, continue on here. These charges and damages will continue to accrue until your livestock are removed from the lawman. Until you get your dang cows off our land. You don't come in here until we say. I didn't buy this from them. They don't own it. They didn't purchase from our state legislature. Study the Constitution. They must purchase any land from the states by approval of the state legislatures. They never did. They don't own it. And even then, it can only be for forts, docks, arsenals, those things for the defense of our nation. So who is the lawbreaker? Well, it's not me. It's them. You need to understand that. Let's continue on here. You, me, you, the boy Finkham, you're allowed five days from the receipt of this notice to appear at the BLM office at 345 Riverside Drive in St. George to effect a settlement for your trespass damages. Get your butt down here in five days. Pay these fees and ask for forgiveness. And we can probably work this out. You know that's not going to be happening, don't you? Okay. Now it's also important that you uh, begin to put names to these people. These bureaucracies are made up of people. District Manager, to sincerely, Timothy J. Burke, District Manager. So there he is. This is the man. This is the bureaucrat that's threatening me. Well, not only me. Here he goes. He sent a copy of this letter to my lending institution. Okay, so he's going to put some pressure on. Boy, get back in line. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm just a small rancher. Uh, I don't have deep pockets. You know, I have mortgages on my, my house here. I've got mortgage on my ranch. You know, and there's my trucks out there. I, I got payments on my trucks I got to make. You know, I'm just like, a, like most Americans, just working hard, trying to make payments, trying to put it for my, my family. Put food on the table, you know. I'm not out there fighting with people. I'm not out there threatening people. Okay, well, so here's my response. Certified letter. Receipt return. Or return of receipt. Okay. Well, certified mail. Dear Mr. Perk, this is my letter to inform you that the BLM stole approximately 45,000 gallons of my water out of my Coyote Springs holding tank this summer. I understand it was used to fight some wildland fires, but you neither asked nor paid me for my water. You could have used the helicopters to draw water out of the Colorado River and had plenty of water without taking mine. Coyote Springs is my only live water on my ranch, and I have deed to 50% of that spring. That is 50% for 12 months out of the year. You, the BLM, claim you own the other 50% of the spring to be used on your ranch, the BLM's ranch, which borders mine. I hereby give you notice that you have seven days from the receipt of this letter to return to my Coyote Springs tank 45,000 gallons of water. At the end of seven days, if you have not restored my water, I will turn all 100% of the water onto my ranch until I've recovered the stolen amount. The spring flows approximately 500 gallons a day. You know, it's not a big spring, it's just a little spring. My only spring. My daily amount is 250 gallons a day. That leaves 250 gallons a day that you claim is yours. Illegally, I may claim, I have no constitutional right to own that. To repeat, if my water is not restored in seven days, I will be taking all the water flow of Coyote Springs for the following 180 days. You divide 45,000 gallons divided by 250 gallons, it takes 180 days to make up the stolen amount. In addition, I give you notice to leave my water alone in the future, to leave my cattle alone, to leave my grazing rights alone. I am sending a copy of this notice to the Mojave County Sheriff and to the American people. This is me giving notice to you, the American people, so that you may know what's going on. Okay. So now you can see the pressure that's starting to come. And you know I'm not going to bow. You know I'm not going to bend down. Now when, as I said earlier, when this, the the states, or when our, our politicians, when our representatives fail to confine the federal government to the strict confines of law, remember, there are specific and enumerated powers narrowly defined that the federal government must function within. 
They're way out of bounds. When our politicians fail to hold them in that, and then when our courts, when the Supreme Court fails to hold them in that. And, and, and remember, people say, well, if the Supreme Court says it's okay, then, then it's okay. Well, that's not true. <laughs> our rights are defined by five men in black. And let me quote you Thomas Jefferson in, in 1820, as he got older and saw what the Supreme Court was doing. You know, he said, to consider that the courts, the Supreme Court, to be the sole arbiter of all constitutional questions is a dangerous doctrine and will lead to despotism, and that's what it's done. My grazing rights do not exist because there's a federal government or there's a Supreme Court. Those personal property rights existed because they're natural to me. And I've explained how personal property rights are established. I won't do that again here. So when our politicians and courts fail to restrain, restrain this federal government, then the individual states are to step up and restrain the federal government. Well, our states have failed to do that. They've failed to restrain them. What is the final recourse to uphold our Constitution, the law of the land, and the liberty of the people? It has to be the individual Americans. That's the last line of defense. It's the last recourse we have. And so here I am. Here I, as an individual person, can make a stand. I can stand up and defend the Constitution. And that's what I'm doing. I'm telling the federal government that this land belongs to the state of Arizona and to Mojave County. These are public lands for our state. You didn't buy them. You didn't purchase them. They're ours, the state of Arizona's. Those grazing rights are personal property rights. Those mineral rights belong to the states. Those lumber rights belong to the state. This is Arizona public land. And I uphold the rule of law. I uphold the Constitution. I believe in government. I do. This isn't about me trying to be an anarchist. It's me holding up the Constitution and the rule of law. And so as an individual, here I can. I can, I can stand up to the federal government, one of the greatest powers upon the face of the earth at this time, and say, I will not comply with your lawlessness. I am not going to bow down. I'm not going to sign your mandatory terms and conditions. I am not going to present myself in five days and ask for your forgiveness. I am not going to pay your additional fines and fees. And so, I'm not the only one. Clive and Bundy's done it in Nevada. I'm doing it in Arizona. Stan Gleaves is doing it in Utah. Here's three separate ranchers in their own sphere with an opportunity to stand up and hold up our Constitution and to show the country and the world that the federal government has far outreached its, its power or its defined powers. It is not restrained by law. So, what can you do? Since I made the video back a couple weeks ago, hundreds of you have contacted me through different means, social media and other avenues, saying, we're going to come, we're going to come and stand by you. You're going to willingly put your life on the line to help defend my ranch. Boy, I take my hat off to you. you know, what more can a person give than his life? And so, but now it's not the time. <laughs> it's not the time to come down here and help defend my cows in this little place here. That time will probably come, but now is not the time. Um, and so what can you do now? Well, I don't, I don't have deep pockets. There is something you can do to help me finance this fight. Um, I've written a book. A couple years ago, it's just been published, and this is a way that uh, I can help finance this this fight with the BLM. And the book is called "Only by Blood and Suffering: Regaining Lost Freedoms." There's a there's a picture of it, and uh, it's just gotten published. It's doing well on Amazon. Yeah, it's running five stars. And it's about uh, it's a, a novel of end time scenarios with a nation in crisis and a family trying to pull together in. Uh, time of great national crisis. And what it is, I've written what I believe we're going to be facing as a nation and as individuals. And it highlights the right, the natural rights of man versus the collective. And it's a great book to teach these principles at an emotional level, at the family level. And so uh, I, I believe it's a great tool for you to help teach your family stuff. It pulls at the heartstrings. It's difficult to read in that uh, emotionally it, it kind of gets to you. At least it does me. 
and I probably uh, I reread it a couple times, and it still gets me, even though I, I wrote the book. But yeah, if you want to buy that book, it will help me to to fund and, and finance this fight because they will come at every every angle and every level. But the time will come, whether it's with me or again with Clive and Bundy down in, in Nevada or with Stanton Gleaves up in Utah. You Americans, you, you people who love freedoms, in whose hearts and breasts that fire still burns, you're going to have an opportunity to come here and stand with individuals that are standing. I'm not sure which ranch it is that they'll, they'll take out first, but they've got to crush all three of us. They can't let this go. What happens if other ranchers start standing up? They've got to put this down. And uh, the rumor is that instead of the, the BL, head of BLM, old Dan P. Love, trying to run it this time, that the, the FBI is going to run the next operations against us. I'm not sure how it's going to come or when it's going to come. Things could, uh, could develop fairly fast, particularly over my water, because I am going to protect my water. I am going to use my water. That means I'm going to shut the water off to the BLM's ranch. And they stole my water. I'm going to replace my water. Or they could take that tanker, get some tankers, and go fill my tank back up, and then don't have an issue. Um, be fair. Be just. Anyway, please share this. Please uh, let everybody know how it's progressing. Don't need to hop in your, your car or your truck and come here just yet. Uh, my next week, uh, my next month, or six months from now, or, or whenever, don't know how it will progress. But uh, please keep America in your prayers. Please keep... Uh, those who are seeking to defend the Constitution, please keep them in your prayers. It means a lot. This land is a land of freedom. It was a land of freedom. It will be again if you as an individual American stand up. And, and, and I'm standing here. And Cliven is standing there. Stanton Gleaves is standing over there. And other people are standing in their place. And we'll stand together. We will uphold these freedoms. We will restore these liberties. I truly believe that we'll come out on top. Yeah. I believe God's on the side of freedom. And I want to say that. And thanks again for all your support. Catch you later. Keep you updated. Thanks.